J Show. Okay, why didn't I call my channel The J Show? There's probably like already a J Show, okay. I crazy if you I don't know what order I'm uploading videos but I'm doing just like a ton of filming today because well this like I'm gonna have to film a couple in a day so just bear with me for a while while I'm getting my feet wet with teaching because things are crazy things are so crazy okay <laughs> if you're if you're a teacher or if you've ever well heck if you've ever started a new job you know how crazy things are it's like nerve-wracking and exciting and like you're like I don't think I know what I'm doing I'm pretty sure I'm completely clueless like no um so I'm doing a lot of filming so I'm like feeling crazy and um, just having one of those cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs days. Okay, I have a new box for you guys, and they contacted me, and I was like, I don't know, and I took a while to respond. I'm like terrible. Businesses that contact me are probably like, she's the worst. <laughs> like, I will not respond for like ever, because I want to think about things. Like, I don't want to say, yeah, for sure I'll review your thing. Now, of course, I've told you guys before, I never say yeah, and I'll give it a good review. No. I'll just be like, if you want to send it to me, by all means, go for it, but no guarantees on how I'm going to feel about it and if I reviewed or not. So this one they contacted me and it was like food. And I was like, maybe, never done it. Why not, right? Why not? But it was an expensive box. It's like $45 a month. And of course they were sending it to me to review so I didn't have to pay it. But I'm thinking, what benefit is this gonna do you guys if it's $45 a month? I mean, I wouldn't pay it. I'm gonna be real, I wouldn't pay it because I don't have that kind of money to spend. Now, if I had all kinds of money, oh sure. Sure. If I could just throw money around like on tons of different subscription boxes, of course I would. But this is one of my jobs, so I figure, you know what, I'll just do it. Who knows, a few of you out there might really be interested in it or really be a foodie or like a chef or a cook. I mean, I, my boyfriend and I love to cook. And we love, ironically, the reason this initially drew my attention in the end and the reason I was like, okay, I'll do it. I've been prefacing this for two minutes. I'm sorry, just whatever, just listen, just listen. <laughs> The reason I thought it was pretty cool is because this box is a food box that features different countries' cuisines each time you get the box. And we always cook meals, like when we're really feeling it, and there was like a couple weeks, a few weeks ago, that like every night we were cooking a different cuisine. We would, did Moroccan, and then we did, um, what else have we done? Indian, German, Italian, of course. I mean, there were a few. Did we do, well, of course we did Mexican. We did Spanish, we did, I don't know. We did quite a few, and we we have a list of ones we want to try. I think we did Israeli. I don't know. Regardless, that's something we like to do. We like to go on, like, our favorite app is Yumly. Oh, my gosh. If you haven't used that app, it's such a good recipe app. But anyway, um, and we just will look up different recipes from that cuisine and then make them. And it's just so much fun. We'll even do, like, wine or drinks from there, like, that we can make that is something more traditional there. So that's what we do. So this box, I'm like, dude, I told Tyler about it. He's like, yeah, say yes. I'm like, well, I'm going to think about it. Anyway. It's called Try the World. A blam. It's a big old box, really. I mean, compare is kind of heavy. Um, this month's was France, which I thought was wonderful because we. I don't think we have. No, I know we have not made a French meal yet. So I'm really excited to see what's in here and see if we can use it for some recipes that I've looked up before, um, just to see if it will kind of fit right in. But I'm very excited. So, oh, a few things. So it's forty five dollars a month. Well, let me rephrase. It's forty five dollars, but it's every two months you get it. So. I guess if you split it up, as if it were a monthly subscription, it'd be what, like $22.50 a month? Is that math right? Yeah. Whoa. Um, oh, I just looked in. It looks really cool. Okay, it looks really cool. <laughs> I wish it wasn't so expensive. Okay, so first they give you a culture guide, which I'm assuming it says, greetings and welcome to your sojourn in Paris. Um, it gives you, oh my gosh. Okay, so first it says Parisian playlist and it gives you a bunch of songs. Like, um, Him, Le, Him a l'Amour by Edith Piaf. Edith. Okay, um, I mean, just a ton. And then what's the next? French movies. It gives you a list of French. This is adorable. French poetry. Oh, and then it gives you that poem in French, of course, because things get lost in translation, that is for sure. It says, Explore Paris culture. And it goes through, like, the Louvre and, um, all kinds of other things I don't know how to pronounce yet. I say yet, because I figure eventually I will. Um, some Paris tips when you're going around Paris. How to make clips. <laughs> That's cool. It's got the recipe for them. And this says, hungry for more French culture. And then it says, check out our magazine online, like an online magazine. This is really cool. It says, if you keep traveling, discover Tokyo. So I wonder if that's the next box coming. Okay. 
I'm sweating. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited to cook all this stuff or use it at least. So it tell it has a thing that explains exactly what everything is. Let's dig in. Okay. First thing I'm seeing is this nougat. Like little bars. It says Chabert and Guillot. I'm I'm sure I'm gonna butcher all these. I'm sorry, especially if you're from France or you speak French. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. Um, but it comes with two of them. Let's see what this says on here. Um, there it is. Founded in 1848, this brand has been run by the Chabert family in the city of Montelimar, southeastern France. Um, it says that this nougat is so well known throughout France, it often finds itself tucked into suitcases for all sorts of trips. That's cute. I wonder if you're from France if you've heard of this, like if this actually is or if they're just saying that. Um, but this would be a nice like with coffee kind of thing. I picture like with black coffee. Part of me wants to try it right now because I'm drinking some black coffee. But so that would just be a nice like Sunday morning with your newspaper, just like nugget, nougat. All right, the next thing I'm seeing, ooh, La Sonnier de Camargue. My boyfriend speaks some French. I should have had him like tell me how to pronounce all these before I started this. So this it says that it's sea salt. That's pretty cool because we just bought some Himalayan pink salt to use instead of just table salt because it's got more of like the, from what I understand, it's got more of the nutrients in it. It's not as stripped from all that naturally comes in it. So I love the idea of that. And this, I wonder if it'd be, you know, similar. But it says um, it's flour of salt. It's an artisanal, unrefined finishing salt. It's cultivated in the south of France, the coastal area. It's harvested by hand, traditionally sold in its purest form. I love that. Um, due to its relative scarcity and its labor-intensive production, Fleur de Sel is one of the most exclusive finishing salts. This is a lot, too, so that's actually, like, useful in cooking. And, you know, you use salt all the time, and I feel so much better if I'm using salt to use something that is more unrefined, that doesn't have all these weird additives or things taken out of it and then replaced with chemical things, you know. So that is awesome alone. Sheesh. All right. What is this? The next thing is this creme, I don't know, it's a chestnut spread. What? It looks like it's like, okay, I'm just going to say it. It looks like, you know, the butt paste, like little jars, like for babies. That's what it reminds me of, like real, like crinkly, and you know, you know what I mean. All right, let's see what it says about this. Sorry, that was a really bad comparison, but you know. <laughs> it's a unique recipe by master confectioner Clément Fogier. You know I butchered that one. 1885, it's got chestnuts and um, vanilla, ooh. Delicious puree can be used alone as a dessert or enjoyed with cookies or for meal foie baking, or on yogurt, on toast, on brioche, on a croissant. Very excited about this and interesting because I've never had anything like this here in America, that's for sure. Unless it's like Nutella, but I don't know if it would be. Okay, the next thing I'm seeing are these, oh, this is adorable. It says 1856 Klaus caramels. So, I'm assuming these are just, you know, you eat them. Salted butter caramels. Um, the recipe was from uh, 40, 1946. Um, they were celebrating their return to leisure at the beach in Kiberon, Brittany. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's a nostalgic joie de vivre. De vivre. I've never had, known how to say that. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, very excited about this. Again, like this and the nougats would be great, like little dessert things without having to worry about cooking a dessert, like if you are making a French meal. Um, just like cutesy little things like this. I love. I just love things like this, don't you guys? <sighs> okay, the next thing, I'm assuming these go together, they look like jellies. It's jam, little ones. This one is wild blueberry and this one's apricot. Oh my gosh, my dad would go insane. This would be a nice breakfast like on toast or something. Um, where is it? Okay, Alain Milia, uh, um, made with fresh fruits and the finest fruit growers in France. Um, it's a sensory experience of luscious, perfectly ripe, ripe fruit. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The wild blueberries come from high altitude shrubs and the Bergeron apricots um, is famous for its acidulated flavors. Regardless, I mean, come on, those are adorable. It really would be perfect like for, <laughs> don't break. Okay, it didn't break. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, we're good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I wish they were a little bigger, but you know. What this is, speaking of big, this is gigantic. It's in a bag though, let me get it out. What is it? <gasps> I hope it's what I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Mustard. Okay, it looks like a Dijon type mustard. Let me see what it says. Clovis, France. Um, 
The origin of mustard production in France dates back to the Roman Empire. They exported mustard seeds um, in Gaul as early as the 10th century. In 1856, Jean something created the recipe of the famous this stuff. It's in French, but uh, Dijon mustard, whose strong taste stays unique today. Okay, I am a big fan of mustard. Just all mustard. But especially like Dijon type mustards, you know, sweet brown mustard, all of that stuff. This looks amazing. Can you guys see like all the like little seeds or whatever those are? And it's straight up full size. That, you know what this would be really good on. It's just coming to me like chicken. As just, you could almost probably use this alone just on baked chicken and just give it like that juicy, delicious taste without really having to do much. That is awesome. Looks like there is more, oh my gosh. All right, this is a ch chocolate, okay, this powder, I think. I think this is hot chocolate powder. Yes, um, only the finest cocoa beans are used to create this, um, selected from renowned pr provenances. Uh, um, it's not provinces, it's different. Um, carefully roasted to bring out the natural aroma of the tropics. Okay, it all, it's a blend with bourbon vanilla for a subtle and smooth. I love hot chocolate, who doesn't? So that is gonna be awesome. I think it's just one, it might be two pack. I think it's two, yeah, it's two packets in there, cool. And then the last thing in here, yes, is that it's gotta be tea. It's got one, two, oh, excuse me. It's got one, two, three, four tea bags. Let's see what kind it is though, because it's in, written in French. Okay, um, La Palais de Thé. De thé, I, mm. um, it combines the allure of the Orient with the panache of the French tea culture. Enjoyed hot or cold, their fragrant teas are far more than a beverage. They're perfume in a cup, a journey for all the senses. I like that idea. So that's nice, and you guys know I love tea, and like that cozy mug tea subscription box that is awesome. Oh my gosh, I freaking love that thing. Um, this reminds me of that, so that is always nice, and I'm always down for trying new teas, and so is Tyler. So you, I got the tea, the hot chocolate, the full thing of salt, the two jams, the full thing of mustard, the butt paste, no I'm kidding, the um, chestnut spread, I almost said hazelnut, the two nougat things, and then the caramels, and the little culture guide, 45 bucks. It's one of those things, you know, if you have that extra, or if you know you like to buy gourmet little food things like this anyway, and you know you might spend that much like at a store anyway, then do it this way, and then it's like exciting surprises. So I really like it, but you know, you know I'm um, fiscally minded, we'll say. So if I, if I were paying for this, I don't know. It would, if I had the money, of course I would, but I don't. So I'm glad they sent it to me, but that's something you guys have to decide for yourselves, of course. But um, the box is like heavy duty. Like I'm probably gonna reuse this box for something because it's like, and cute. I will put the link below for you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a different type of video. Certainly not typically found on my channel, but hey, I figured I would share it anyway. But I will catch you guys very soon. Bye.